Hi everyone, here is a gift to you from my side as a video tutorial like I normally do for this holiday season and I hope you're having an amazing holidays and again if you're feeling extra generous during these holidays please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so and of course find the thanks button that's pretty close to the subscribe button if you are like I said extra generous. Now uh, why am I making this video? Because during holidays whether it is uh, let's start uh, from Diwali for example okay whether it is Diwali whether it is Ramadan or Ramzan or if it is Hanukkah or Christmas whatever the reason for you to celebrate you know whatever the holiday is most of the time you take pictures with family and friends and uh, oftentimes that happens to be at night right and at night the pictures may not come out that great depending upon the lighting of course depending upon your camera and if you're a camera pro where you know how to adjust your white balance before you even shoot great and if you have access to a lot of uh, you know tools for bra white balance adjustment after you shoot it great but let's say you find yourself a whole bunch of uh, taking a whole bunch of images that are that can use some correction when it comes to white balance or if you find some old pictures right and you're trying to correct them for white balance what do I mean by that yeah here is a Christmas sea picture that looks a bit yellowish and you want to make it a bit more whitish you know to remove the yellow tint like and make it look something like that like this on the right hand side or you take a picture outdoors you're golfing you're one of those lucky ones who do not uh, live in these very cold places so you're out doing your stuff and you're taking pictures and you want nice blue sky right but it's not really there because of something else well there are some cool programs like from adobe and others uh, that you can use for these corrections but what fun is in there we love to code so let's go ahead and uh, try to correct these using coding and this is pretty simple straightforward fun and easy and even if you're not into coding much these are a couple of little steps so before making this video any longer let's go ahead and jump into the code of course the link to the code is also given as part of the description so you can test it uh, yourself and it does not require any fancy libraries most of the time you probably have the library already installed Okay, let me jump to the code and show you how you can make these minor corrections. Okay, here is my code. And again, as usual, I'm using the spider IDE, but it doesn't matter. You can run this from command line, right? So the IDE doesn't matter. And in case you wonder, I'm working on Python 3.7.11 and uh, OpenCV version 4.5.4. This is something you may have to install. Uh, all you need to do is pip install OpenCV-Python and NumPy I'm doing 1.23, okay, 1.20.3. These are the versions. So uh, even in future, I do not anticipate any big issues with this, but just in case I'm giving you what version I'm working on. Okay, so what is our goal? Well, I have a couple of images. Let's go ahead and look at it. The same uh, image that I showed you earlier that's got some sort of a yellowish this is a bit uh, too yellow i like some of this uh, yellowish feeling because it kind of gives you that nice warm feeling uh, but it this is a bit on the yellow side too much yellow and same with this other image it can be better with nice blue skies and everything let's test these two and uh, let's jump into the code so first thing first we have to import our libraries i'm going to import opencv and numpy and by the way i'm going to show you two methods of doing this one is gray world algorithm and it assumes that the image is actually taking taken well meaning all the gray levels are all the colors are equally balanced which means when you average everything all the colors you should end up with the mean color of 128 right in an 8-bit image pixel values go from 0 to 255 where 128 is right in the middle so we assume that okay when you average everything the mean pixel value is 128 and that's the assumption that we use for the gray world algorithm the other one is white patch reference basically saying hey i don't care about uh, your algorithm basically this is an area that i know must be white so let's just define that and normalize all the pixels to that white value. These are the two approaches. Again, uh, let's look at the first one, the gray world uh, algorithm. Uh, I already printed out my uh, versions, but in case uh, you want to check more, the, uh, this is not defined. I have to import everything and print it out on the screen. There you go. It's uh, 3.7.11 Python, 454 uh, OpenCV and 123 uh, NumPy. Okay, now let's look at the gray world uh, algorithm. Again, I wrote a bit of a text, which is exactly what I just told you. 
Let's use uh, OpenCV to read the image. You can use scikit-image or anything, but I'm sticking with OpenCV with one uh, library for now. So let's go ahead and read it. And when you read that, you know the image is a NumPy array of three channels. Because I'm using OpenCV to read the image, it's going to be BGR, blue channel first, green second, red third. It doesn't matter. We are going to convert that into lab space anyway. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the image. So there you go. Again, that's the third time you're seeing this image, but let's see what we can do. The way we are trying to approach this is uh, we'll convert the image to lab space. I hope you know what lab space is. L stands for the lightness. Like it's basically think of L as the black and white image and A and B are the ones that are adding color to this black and white image. And how are they adding? A is for red and green. Oh, let me type green right there. And B is for blue and yellow, I believe, blue and yellow. And we'll calculate the mean color of A, mean color of B. So we are going to separate the channels uh, A and B and we are calculating the mean color. And then we are going to subtract 128 from the mean and we're going to normalize our lab space, the intensity image, uh, the lightness image uh, to 255 and multiply that with this average. Okay, and think of what this does uh, when, when you're doing it. And also when uh, this entire thing you can multiply that with some sort of a multiplication factor to increase or decrease the brightness of the whole image, but that's up to you. But uh, the key point is this right there. So we are going to uh, convert our BGR image into lab, and then I'm going to extract channel number one and channel number two that correspond to A and B. And we are going to average all the pixels, which means we get a one single number for my average A, average B. From that single number, we are subtracting 128 and we are normalizing this lab space image. Uh, you see the, the, the lightness image and multiplying it with this. Okay, and then we are subtracting everything from here. So this is the function that I have written for that. So let's go ahead and run that function. And now let's just go ahead and input our image to run that. And let's go ahead and look at the uh, output image. So this is the before, this is the after. I, I kind of like this right hand side. You see where this region like the, the that's supposed to be white is white. Here that is not white. There is a overall yellowish tinge. It's a it's a matter of personal taste, but you can adjust the amount of this if you want uh, by proper um, control over white points, which is what we'll talk in a minute. But this is pretty amazing, right? I mean, this is a much better image now. It removes all the yellow uh, shade. Sometimes it can be uh, more blue or cyan, depending upon the setting on your camera. Okay, so that is that. Now you can go ahead and save your uh, image as a PNG or JPEG, so you can post it on Instagram or whatever you do with your family pictures or friends uh, pictures with your friends. Okay, now moving on to, uh, let's actually change this image to the lake.png image, the other one where we have uh, less brightness, so you can see how this algorithm actually works. So there you go. So that's, uh, that. Uh, let, let, let's actually see how this algorithm works on that image. So here, let's run all of these and look at before and after. It's not bad, right? I mean, it's actually on the left-hand side, uh, dark, blues are blues. So it's not, you know, it is actually doing some corrections right there, but maybe it gets better if I change my multiplication factor to, I don't know, 3.2 or something. At some point, you're going to saturate uh, the pixel value, so you may not see much of a difference, but let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's still the same there, so not much going on. So what, uh, is there a better way? Is there a better way to handle, let me change this before I forget, sorry. Let me change these to 1.2, and uh, let's look at this final image one more time because we can actually see, is there a better way of improving this? What if I tell the algorithm that, hey, this cloud right there, this small piece, should be white and increase the brightness to that to white so and also pull all the rest of the image along with it right that's basically we are going to find out the mean pixel value or maximum pixel value within that small patch over there and then normalize the entire image with that value so let us go ahead and look at how that's done but first thing first this part that i'm going to show you is basically you as the the uh, as the expert 
are telling the algorithm that, hey, this is a small box where I have uh, a white pixel. So go ahead and take that white pixel and use that as the normalization. But how do you how do you do that? How do you interactively do that in Python? So here is uh, here is a function that lets you click on an image and it gives you the x and y coordinates. Uh, you can find many variations of this online. So I don't claim to be uh, writing every part of this. Literally, I copied this from somewhere. But let's uh, see how it works on our image. First thing first, let's go ahead and read the image. Let's use the lake image as uh, as before. And I'm going to clone the lake image because when you do all these extra stuff in OpenCV, when you draw a box and when you put some text on it, it kind of gets embedded into the image and I don't like that. I want my image to be clean so I am cloning that image so I can use it more uh, multiple times. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and uh, run these lines so it opens an image. There you go. Let me move it to the center of the screen so it opens an image. Now, I, where do I get my white point from? In this entire image, the best place where I know the pixels are supposed to be white is right around there, right? So I'm gonna click somewhere around here and it gives me pixel coordinates of 506, 177. By the way, 177 is from top to bottom in height. 506 pixel is from left to right. So when you're entering it, it should be the other way around. In fact, that's exactly how I entered. I did this exercise right before this video and I got a value 502, 174. I probably clicked a little to the left. Uh, uh, so that's the values I'm entering here. So with this exercise, we know what the pixel values are. So that's what I'm defining. My H start in height is 174. In width, my starting point is 502. That's the pixel. And then I'm gonna go 10 pixels to the right, 10 pixels to the bottom, and I just defined a small tiny little box of 10 by 10 pixels. It can be larger for you if you have a very large white patch in your images. So let's go ahead and define that. And now I am using my image as the cloned image, the one that we just cloned. And from this image, I'm extracting a small patch where we just define the coordinates, right? So this small patch is going to be just 10 by 10. That's it. So if you look here, the image patch is just 10 by 10 by three. So we just cropped the image and extracted a small patch. Now, this is the key. It's very simple. It's a single line right there. All I'm trying to do is I'm normalizing an image by dividing that with the maximum pixel value from this patch, yeah? Uh, along this axis zero one. So you are going to get, in fact, just run these three, just run this so you understand in case what it gives you. Oh, I need to close the bracket if I can see my keyboard. There you go. So it's giving you a maximum value of 149 by 165 by 179. It's giving me all the three because I put my axis equals to zero one, right? So I'm dividing my image with this. So that is how we are normalizing the image. So all this is doing is just normalizing all the three channels. So let's go ahead and do that. And now that it's normalized, if you look at the maximum pixel, because we are normalizing it with some value, there may be some pixels with higher pixel values uh, that are outside of this patch. We don't know. You don't want values above 255, right? So uh, you need to clip it. So uh, you see how it says 1.12 somewhere. So there is a pixel somewhere else that is with a, a slightly higher brightness. So that's exactly why I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and clip all the values between zero and one. By the way, this is all floating point numbers between zero and one. So let's go ahead and clip them to between zero and one. That's it. Our image is ready. So let's go ahead and print out these images on the screen and also put the rectangle onto the image so you know exactly where the normalization happened. So let's go ahead and do that. Isn't that image great on the right hand side? So this is where we defined our box, our patch. And obviously that box is now like pretty bright white. And it also brought the rest of the image. I like the nice blue sky over there. I like I like, I like, like this image. There are a lot of other stuff that you can do with Python. The whole point of this exercise is uh, to make sure you appreciate the simplicity of Python in solving these everyday problems. Okay, guys, now do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Stay safe and enjoy the holidays and uh, keep watching my videos. Thank you.